What do you do? Need to run it. Which way? Run into the left. Go left. Need to run into the left. Hold still. Hold still. He stopped. He stopped. He stopped. He just went down. Just went down. Yes, he did. He just went down. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, he just went down. I watched him fall. We say we tell the wildest stories. Here's a wild story on a 212 inch, 100% wild, 100% fair chase buck in Southern Iowa. I can't even see straight, I'm so excited because if this guy comes out, it's going to be unbelievable tonight. Has he got his gun up or is he just walking he's out? He's walking. He don't know the deer's there. No, I don't. but he's got to step right on top of the deer. We're so lucky to be able to share this incredible story of this 212 inch Iowa giant. This segment of DOD TV is brought to you by Winchester Firearms, the American legend. I have a very dear friend by the name of Roger Sapper. Roger is someone who's no stranger to giant deer. He's killed a couple different bucks, over 200 over the last 10 years. And I get a text from him one night while I'm out there hunting with Taylor. And I look at it and he said, oh, there's a giant in the food plot. And about that time, the buck Taylor and I were after enters the food plot, put my phone in my pocket, she ends up killing this deer. We do the recovery, do the photos. My phone keeps buzzing throughout the night and I didn't know till later what Roger was talking about. I look through all my messages from that night and I'm like, holy cow, this thing is a mega giant. I call him up, I'm like, buddy, do you need a cameraman? He was like, I was hoping you'd offer. The plan was set. We're gonna finish out the second shotgun season there in Iowa. I'm gonna be filming Roger. Our fingers are crossed that this monster walks back into this food plot one more time. Dear Simber rolls on. Tonight's a pretty special night. I'm going over to hunt with and film a dear, dear friend and Roger Sapper. Roger and I met each other probably 25 years ago at a Bass Pro Show, and uh, we've remained in contact and friends for the last two and a half decades. So I'm going over to film with Roger, and I am literally, I can't even see straight, I'm so excited, because if this guy comes out, it's going to be unbelievable tonight. I've got the Winchester 350 Legend, Winchester 350 Deer Season XP, the exact recipe we need here during Iowa's second shotgun season. Deer Simba rolls on. Roger, let's get it done, buddy. We're gonna go along for the ride, put the Drury Outdoors cameras with Roger every night until we see or kill this giant again. I'm first up to bat on the camera. Come on, Roger, let's go have some fun. Where is he at? Right over that top of that pond now. Is he? Mm -hmm. So he's bedded right there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he bedded there on, in that timber right there. Yeah, he coming. I didn't even have a tag. I was sitting down here just doing a little bit of scouting for muzzleloader season. And this 200 inch buck steps out, walks right up there. 40 yards from the blind, all I had was a cell phone to video him. Now imagine being Roger out there scouting because he really didn't have pictures of anything good the entire fall. He felt like EHD had really set his farm back. All of a sudden this monster walks into his life and then he checks some trail cameras. He's got pictures of this giant. I'm so jacked about tonight's hunt. I'm really thankful that Roger invited me to come over and film this and try and lay it down. It'd be kind of cool to see that Winchester in action on a giant. Beautiful setup. We're in this blind. Roger's got a cut cornfield out in front of him and then nothing but really tall grass and willows and brush, everything south of him. Tell me what you're doing, Roger. I'm getting the feel of this trigger. Is he dead? Oh yeah, 100%. <laughs> Depends how bad you're shaking. <laughs> I might be shaking tonight. All right, first night, and we're sitting there for just a little while. We had seen a few deer, and all of a sudden, Roger goes, there he is, here he comes. He's glassing through those little poles, and he sees him, and I can just hear the excitement in his voice. I knew he was looking at that deer. Then I had to try and get on him and get what footage I could. He's to the right of the doe, by that big old clump of trees oh. right there. Got him. He must have been bedding right there, and they probably made him get up. Oh, geez, don't go that way, buddy. No, what's up with that? Don't go that way. I think they got him freaking spooked. They do. Oh, way, man, there he goes. And he was dead. He's following them. Don't do this. 
Deer stays out. He's got a little bit of a limp. He's clearly got some sort of injury. So we're thinking he's injured. He's probably going to come to the food plot. But the weather was probably deteriorating along Deercast as we watched it. Tonight was probably our best shot because we had high pressure, but we have a warming trend coming. So we're a little worried about that. He's limping from west to east and we're thinking he's going to get with some of these other deer and follow them into the food plot. Something spooked him. He's getting out while he can. They're still running yeah, with their tails up. They sure are. Back here behind him. What the heck, dude? Look, they're still running. Yep. That sucks. He was bedded over there, I bet you. Oh, hell yeah. They got him up. They ran right over him. Unbelievable. What are the freaking odds, Roger? We watched and watched and watched, and he literally just melted out into that grass. We seen these two does come running down there along the field over there in that tall grass, and all of a sudden I see this big old rack, and I'm like, that's our buck. There he is, like 300 yards from us. They went on past him running, and I'll be darned if he didn't turn around and start walking behind him and following him. <laughs> that's about as bad a luck as I've seen in a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible luck. Oh, man went over by the edge and bed it down. Here he comes. Here he comes, dude. Come on, buddy. I think he's getting ready to jump a fence right there, isn't he? There he did it. I got it. Oh, my. He's coming, buddy. Breathing hard now, dude. still see him. He bedded some thick grass there. Okay. And I don't see him right now. I don't know if he bedded or what he's doing. Great encounter, but our assumption is he bedded back down out there. But it gave us very high confidence that we were going to get this done. We just needed to be patient, hunt smart, and hopefully sooner or later he was going to walk within range of Roger. We're so sure that this deer's going to be here tomorrow, right? Eh? We're just going to leave all of our gear here in the blind and we're going to be back tomorrow evening to seal the deal. We made it back in here about 2.30. It's about quarter after three now. Hopefully he's bedded back out here in this tall grass. I saw him two nights in a row. Last night, them does come down there and they jumped over him and scared him and he kind of followed him over past the creek. So he's bedded out here in front of us somewhere. So we're gonna knock him out tonight. So we're back in there on night number two. Pretty uneventful. What might have happened to him? Did somebody kill him? And we're like, okay, what's going on? Go just a little bit further to the left. You see all them thistles right there? It's like a group of thistles. Roger has been glassing all evening, and he finally caught a glimpse of that deer standing in the weeds down there, just his head moving back and forth like he stood up to stretch a little bit. We cannot see the deer right now, so he may have rebedded. Lost him now. I think he might have bedded back down. I think he did. I can't find him. As he bedded out in this sea of grass, we were gonna play it smart, hunt the wind right, be safe on our access in and access out. We're gonna come back the next night. And we watched this body rebedded because it's really tall grass. All we could see was his rack. Then he went down. Conditions don't get any better tomorrow, but we can't kill him if we aren't here. So we're going to leave everything in the blind again and try, try again tomorrow. It's 3.33. We just got our first two deer on the field. That hasn't happened in the last two days. They usually don't start coming till like 4.30 or so. So maybe this is a good sign. They're fawns, but they count. So we're back in there on night number three. Roger, he's scanning this bottom, and I'm scanning the bottom, but Roger sees the buck. Where it is he? Where? He's right out there. See them, them tall bushes? Yeah. He's on the right edge of the bush. Yeah, there he is. He's looking at the guy. Well, it's not long after that, Roger's like, there's a hunter over there, you know, to our southeast. So we catch glimpses of orange of this guy. There's the orange, I can see him. And I, I film him a little bit. Roger's trying to look at where he's at, and he's like, he's on my property right there. My heart is pounding now, man. Well, the fact that he's back there by that guy, I, I can't know. believe I can't even believe it, Roger. He just stood up out of his bed again. We got a visual on him again. 
but there's a hunter. Yes. Literally within 150 yards of him. Yes. We might be in trouble tonight, folks. I don't know. Well, there's a deer in front of you to the left. A doe. As long as the guy don't see him. Because if that guy sees him, he's going to shoot him on you. 100%. Oh, he moved, dude. He moved to the left. He moved to the left, but kind of was quartering to us a little bit. Okay. Yeah, there's his rack coming. Yeah, but the other deer's walking straight to that other guy, dude. A Seriously? Doe. Yes, there's a doe 50 yards in front of him, walking straight down that grass right towards that freaking dude. I can't see the hunter. He was right there behind that. Dislike. Yeah, he's still there. I still see his orange hat. You know, he doesn't, dude. Oh, please come our way, please. Yes. See it. Now it's coming this way. Yeah. He's right to the right of them two great big old white oaks. that are out there in the center of them bushes. The sun's going down. I'm having a heart attack. Me too. If he goes in the corn, he's dead meat. You see them two giant white oaks? Yeah. Right dead in the center of them bushes. The buck, once again, he's following some does. He's not looking like he's gonna come to the food plot. I film him all that I can, and all of a sudden I lose him. I don't see the buck anymore. Okay, he's looking to the right. I know, I see him. Is he aiming? He's not aiming, is he? Well, he's got his head tilted over like I he know. is looking through a scope. I think I'm gonna quit deer hunting. There's too much stress. Yes. Dude, that deer ain't very far from that guy. 45 minutes before last light, we know the buck is bedded somewhere out in this bottom. This guy gets up and is starting to walk through Roger's property right at this buck. So we don't know if he's seen the deer, whether he knows he's there or not. And uh, I literally thought we were gonna lose Roger in that blind that night. I'd say he's gathering his stuff for you. Yeah, that's what, that's what I think he's, he's doing. He's got a long walk out of here. I wonder where he's going. He's walking. Well, he's coming right up my property. He's walking right to that buck, dude. What are you gonna do? I don't know, man. He's walking right to that freaking buck. Has he got his gun up or is he just walking he's out? He's walking. Like, he don't know the deer's there. No, I but he's gonna step right on top of the deer. He might push him in us, Roger. I think he's gonna end up shooting it when the deer stands up. Oh, he just stopped. He's liable to push the deer to us. I think he'll kill the deer. I mean, he's walking straight a beeline to that deer. Did the guy stop? I don't know, I lost him in there somewhere. Incredible experience, one that I can't really relate to having in the deer woods prior to this. There he is, see him? Yeah. Why come he don't get up when he smells him like that? Because he knows where he's at, and he's, he's he smelled him come in, he's smelling him go away. Deer hold to cover, that's their safest bet. That guy'd have to walk over that deer to, to get him up. All right, that hunter literally walks within 50 yards of where that buck had bedded back down. He put his wind across that deer. It shows you how good they are at surviving, and it also tells us he knows he's being hunted, and this is going to be a very tough task. We had a guy tonight right there. Last night, there was a guy over here. This morning, there was a guy there. It's why this deer went nocturnal and quit moving. Roger's got great footage of him the first night he sat here, but since then, the pressure's been intense, and so all that scent, he keeps catching it every day. That's why we haven't killed this deer. It really shows you how big deer stay alive. In your mind, you're thinking, he's gonna get up and run and come towards us, or just get up and run, and that guy's gonna take a shot. That buck stayed bedded. He used the cover of that grass and let that guy walk on out, put his wind right over him. Second shotgun season comes to a close. He's still got a late season muzzleloader tag. So we've got guests coming in. We've got a show to fill. So we decide to put other camera people with Roger. First up to bat is Perry Batten. Perry, this is a job just for you. Go out there and film Roger kill that 212. It's uh, December 27th, fifth time after this big buck that we're going after tonight. Hopefully we'll see the buck come in to, to cut corn 40, 50 yards and get to knock him out. First three nights we hunted him during the shotgun season. We saw him all three nights, but never got a shot at him. He stayed a little too far. We had a lot of hunting pressure on the south fence line from the neighbors. And I think that's why he wasn't getting up. 
So hopefully he'll show up in here tonight and we'll knock the heck out of him. That's a really nice young deer. It's 325 and we already got four small bucks just come out about five minutes ago. They've never moved that early here yet. It's usually around four to 415. That's a really good sign. They go out, have a wonderful evening together, and what do you know, they see the buck again. There he is at the end of the bushes. See him now? Yep, I got him. Okay. Like 300 yards right there. So this is now four different times that Roger has encountered this giant. But our confidence continues to get a little bit higher, the fact that he's not going anywhere. He's literally living in this bottom. However, he's not coming close enough for a shot. Oh, I don't see him. He's almost behind the brush pile. Oh, really? Yeah. I can't see him. I don't have him now. Night after night after night, we're seeing the deer, but he's not coming within range. So we're just gonna continue to stay in there, continue to film. Hopefully he eventually makes a mistake. Perry goes back with him again, and once again, they encounter the deer out in all of that sea of grass. Oh yeah, yeah, that's him, here he comes, dude. Giant deer, we're catching pretty good glimpses of footage of this deer out through all that grass. We know it's him, he's still limping just a little bit. He won't come to the food plot. Coming this way. Oh my gosh, look at the size of that behemoth. Roger, the next day after that encounter, gets on the phone, talks to his buddy Austin. Austin says, I've got a long range muzzleloader. It's a custom made gun. He goes, I think we can take that deer at that distance. They do some shooting and they're ready to go in there and make a shot on that deer. This time Taylor Byers is up to bat. She has volunteered to go film Roger. Maybe you're the lucky charm we need to make this happen. It's a 10 till three and we just saw our first decent buck out here about 300 yards out. We've been in here six nights and we've saw him five nights out of the six. Hopefully he comes to this cut corn. On cue, this buck shows himself yet again. This is like the sixth encounter they've had with this giant. Different weapon in the blind, fingers across. Roger, make that shot, brother. Still there, here he comes. Oh yeah, there's other big deer as well. Could he this way? Yeah, he's right underneath that overhanging. He stopped. He stopped. Yeah. He stopped. He just went down. Just went down. <laughs> yes, he did. He just went down. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, he just went down. I watched him fall. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm pretty sure you got him, yeah? 
He ain't moved a muscle. I'm getting really like that. Hold on, like I'm gonna faint. That's the type of reaction you would expect after all the highs and lows of seeing that deer so close, having a hunter trespass across your ground, almost walk across the deer, multiple encounters, multiple highs and lows, thinking you're gonna kill him and then you don't. And then finally, he gets it done, deer goes down. Good job, Austin, Taylor, and Roger. We're so lucky to be able to share this incredible story of this 212 inch Iowa giant. I gotta get here. <laughs> I'm <laughs> down, baby. Oh my gosh. What an absolute <laughs> magnum. I've never had a deer wear me out like this deer. We've hunted this thing seven nights in a row, and we saw him six out of the seven nights. You got long tines, long beams, you got the width, you got split brow tines, inside points, and drops, and mass. Unbelievable. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is wearing both of us out. No sleep at all. And he's driving me crazy about it. <laughs> you know how we always talk about magnums? Yeah, that's a true one. That's right a magnum. <laughs> yeah. Last night, was one of the best nights of my life for sure. This all started about a week and a half ago in, uh, in the second shotgun season. I didn't have a tag, so I just went down there and sat in my blind to do some observing. This is the first time I ever laid eyes on this buck was a week and a half ago, and I called up Mark and uh, he started coming down here and videoing me and we saw this buck, but he never would come in close enough. He was staying out in this tall grass about 250 yards. I had a trespasser sitting down there I'm sure he was hunting this buck they knew it, buddy. The guy's walking right towards this buck. He gets within 50 yards of this buck bedded, and he, then he turns and he goes over and crosses the creek, and this buck never did get up. Perry started coming down. He filmed me two nights on him, and we saw him both nights. He still stay out in that grass about 250 to 300 yards. And last night, he come close enough, about 150 yards. My largest frame buck ever in my life. He was 25 and three quarters inside. By far my biggest frame deer ever in my life. Forecasting deer movement was just the beginning, and DeerCast has evolved into so much more, offering groundbreaking new features like DeerCast Track, our comprehensive shot tracking guide, a 10-day deer movement forecast, and DeerCast Custom, the ability to tweak our proprietary DeerCast algorithm to best represent your individual hunting areas. Because we don't want to just get you in front of that perfect whitetail. We want you to be ready for everything that comes after. So get ahead of your game and stay there with DeerCast. <laughs> We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by Leupold.